All right, everyone, today we have a house shot video for you guys. And if you're someone out there that is struggling on dry lanes or dry house shot conditions, maybe you don't know what adjustments to make or where to stand or maybe the right bowling balls to throw. Today, we're gonna give you some pro tips to help improve those scores. All right, so dry lane conditions. You can find them all the time. In fact, oftentimes when we just come in to just practice, a lot of times it's just the leftover house shot from the night before and there's very little oil on the lanes. Or you can be bowling lead in game three they get so burnt or maybe they're just dry from the get-go but we have a very dry condition out here and first things first is you have to figure out okay where on the lane should I be playing and in order to do that properly you got to do some trial and error shots you got to throw the ball as if you're just coming into league or coming into practice you have to throw the ball down the lane and physically see okay how much did that one hook on my normal shot my normal first shot like around second or third arrow how much did it hook and then that's gonna tell you exactly like how much we need to move so Kyle's gonna throw a Shot. Essentially, this is just going to be the uh, test shot, right? So I'm coming in, maybe I'm practicing, and I want to see how dry the lanes are. Now, for me, I got a ball, this magic gem that I'll probably throw on house shots. I normally between third and fourth arrow. So I'm going to throw my normal house shot strategy to start around third and fourth arrow and see how much it hooks. <laughs> Okay. All right, and that was in between third and fourth arrow. Now, Kyle is a high rev guy. He's a professional. His ball spins like crazy. And when you see dry lane conditions like that, look how much that ball hooked. I mean, you almost missed the head pin left. Yeah, absolutely. And my strategy is gonna be a little bit further left than most people's, as far as maybe some amateur bowlers, but we could still see that that ball hooked early and uh, went to the left side of the head pin, and there's really no way I'm gonna be able to play there. Yeah, so his high rev shot is between third and fourth arrow. If you're a low rev guy out there, it's probably around second arrow. That's kind of where I like to throw. Yeah, you know what? Let's throw, just to reiterate how dry this is. So sometimes I like to pick up my ball speed and play around second arrow. Like this is a strategy I use all the time. So I'm gonna do my attempt at playing more up the lane second arrow. Let's see how dry it is. Yeah. <laughs> So that's essentially the first thing you need to figure out is, okay, is it even possible to play out there? And we tried essentially two shots, missed the head pin left on both of them. So that tells us basically what we do every time lanes get really dry is we move left as a right-hander. And if you're a lefty out there, it's a little different because there's not nearly as much transition, but we've seen lefties. Yeah, move you still, all the way still right have to move, yeah. Play the whole lane. Generally, the move is left because that's where the oil is left over on the lane. There's been so many balls going down the lane at second and third and maybe even fourth arrow that there's no oil there anymore. But it doesn't mean there's no oil on the lane. There's only oil on the lane where no one's thrown shots. And that's generally an extreme move to the left, and then your ball has to see majority of the middle part of the lane. If it gets all the way out to the side, it can be inconsistent. There's lots of dry out there. And essentially, we're looking for holes. Yes. We're looking for push. We're looking for a simplistic way of just taming down the hook. And so we do that by just moving really, really far left. So Kyle, this is Kyle's move, by the way. Yeah, this, this is, is, this is what we like to do. So I'm gonna make a pretty big move and Brad's 100% right. No matter if you're someone that likes to throw between second arrow or you're someone that likes to hook them a little bit more, when the lanes get dry, the move eventually is going to be left. So mine might, right now might be a little bigger move than your guys's, uh, but you're still gonna have to do it no matter what. So before I was looking between third and fourth arrow, we're gonna make a move. We're gonna be inside a fourth arrow here between fourth and fifth. And let's see what happens just with a move left. Okay. All right, now that was closer. That was closer. I gave that one a little bit more speed, and but yes, mainly just a move left, trying mm. to get it down the lane. So you could see with my targeting there, before I was between third and fourth, I basically made a five board jump left where I'm trying to throw it through the arrows. And uh, now in between fourth and fifth arrow, and you can see it still went a little high. So for me, when I throw that shot, I made a big move with my feet, nothing else really changed, but I still need to go a little further left. I'm chasing that oil in the middle part of the lane to get my ball to put push down the lane. Yep, it, that was a good sign because we actually hit the pocket. The things you did was, how many did you move? I moved uh, five with my eyes and okay. probably 10 with my feet. And there was definitely also just a little bit more speed. So those two things are happening simultaneously to try and figure out, okay, where do I need to play and how fast do I need to throw it? Generally when they're that dry, you're gonna have to pick your ball speed up Yeah, at yeah. some point. You're not just gonna be able to slowly throw it down there. So. Okay, so let's throw one more shot again. We made that move left like we're talking about and to find more of that oil in the middle part of the lane, that's the really important part we're trying to get across here. Now, 
I'm gonna move my eyes probably another five left to see if I can't get a little more push. So I'm gonna have to stand a little further up. Let's see if we can't get the ball to get down the lane. All right, okay. So again, moving the feet more left, moving my eyes more left, we're chasing that hold. Some of you might not know what hold means, but it's that oil in the middle part of the lane that allows our ball to really push down and get to the pocket. You can see on those first shots, the ball really picked up, didn't allow my ball to get down the lane. So we're chasing that oil in. So now we have a good idea of what the move is, where we need to play, the direction we need to move. Now let's talk about the bowling balls. All right, so we're on the topic of bowling balls now, and we've kind of figured out, this is standard for us, Lanes are really dry. We're just gonna get pretty much up against the ball return. If you're a little less rev rate, you may not have to move as much left. If you're a high rev rate, you're probably gonna have to move a bunch. We have two contrasting bowling balls. We started the video off throwing a Magic Gym, and the Magic Gym is one of the strongest balls on the entire market. And that's interesting because we're bowling on lanes that are extremely dry, and this particular bowling ball is not meant for dry lanes. Right. It's meant no, for lanes where you need hook. And uh, these lanes, we need slide. And so we just want to show you the difference between two pretty contrasting bowling balls. But both of them can work. Yeah. That's kind of one of the ideas that we want to get through. So he's going to start off throwing a magic gem yep. like he has so been. We're going to throw the magic gem. This is a ball that I might use at the beginning of a house shot or the transition. But as the lanes get dry like this, sometimes this ball gets a little too strong. But we're going to throw it for you guys so we can, uh, we can demonstrate. Kind of the same idea where I ended that last one. It's going to be... A little inside of fifth arrow here. Wow. Okay. Got it rolling. So that was the strong ball. And you can see there that the way the ball went through the pins, that the five pin and the seven pin were really late to fall. That means my ball was kind of losing energy as it was going through the pins. And the same idea that we want you to move left to find oil to get that ball down the lane, we want to go to a bowling ball that helps us get down the lane as well. Absolutely. Magic Gem, not really a ball that's going to do that when it's this dry. But the contrasting ball we have is a ball I've been using a lot on burnt up house shots. It's just a hustle. I have a hustle here. This is now a the Magic Gem was an ASIM ball with a really strong cover. This is a symmetrical ball with a shinier, weaker cover. It should allow me to get that ball to clear the lane a lot more and give me a little more down lane. Yeah, totally different purpose and design for this ball. And it tells us a couple things. We saw the Magic Gem actually strike. Even though it's not meant for this condition, it got all 10 down. It didn't look all that terrible. That tells me pretty much any ball is almost in play. Right. You know, if, if the strongest of the strong is still able to strike on the driest of the dry, well then, man, there's probably four or five different balls that could potentially work, especially if this one works. If both contrasting balls work, then it's kind of like, well, just pick the one that, you know, gets you to the hole, you're most comfortable with, whatever. Yeah, which one I like. We're gonna stay in the same exact spot with this hustle here. Kind of think of the same thing, and let's just see the difference in reactions. Okay. Ah. So this is something we're gonna get into in the next part a little bit about like strategy, but you can see with that one, and I might've got a little slow with that one, but we talk about, this is why we wanna give an instructional video because this part of the lanes can get tricky. This ball is cleaner, but because it's cleaner, it's going to conserve more energy and it's gonna be a little faster off that dry. So if I can control that, it's a really good thing because I'm gonna get a lot, of, a lot of momentum going into the pins. But you can see there, as soon as it hit the dry, it really kind of wants to go left because it's conserving energy, it's touching that dry, and then it's digging left. And this game is mental too. So you were throwing this ball, you know that it's gonna hook like a monster. That ball is a little cleaner. Do you think subconsciously a little bit, you just let up on it? Yeah, I think so. I know I need to ball. get that ball down the lane, and that's the one I thought was gonna be a little cleaner, so that's okay. We can move, kind of stay in the same spot. I'm gonna try to get this one to the pocket. Okay. Mm, I like this. Yeah, this is uh Oh yeah. All right, so now we're in it. Um, but you can see with that ball, again, it's conserving way more energy. So uh, this is actually a perfect segue to what we're gonna talk about in the next. And this is why sometimes we don't go to these clean symmetrical balls. But right now what I have is kind of over under to where this ball, man, you can see it's continuing left. Those splits that we're leaving, those are splits that show that your ball has a lot of energy going through the pins. It'd be a lot harder for me to leave that split with that yep. ball. Let me just do one more here for good measure. Kyle, you can do this. Wow! I'm the best. 
I, I kind of like that this is happening because this is bowling. There's not one correct answer that helps all scenarios. Like there's so much trial and error that goes on that it's important to make sure that you actually go through your options. Because even though technically maybe a ball this week is designed for a pattern like this, maybe it's just not matching up to Kyle. You know, yeah. maybe it's just not feeling very good in his hand. So you gotta go through the trial and error. Can I throw one more shot? You can throw one. I'm really wanting to make this work for everybody at home watching. Come on, Kyle, you can do this. Get it down the lane, through the pins. Tip. So that ball to me now is just reacting way too quick, but you can see the difference in reactions. The really strong ball, this is kind of cool too. The really strong ball, the high daddy, king daddy was actually rolling out and not giving me as much hook down lane. And the weaker ball is making me go through the face. It's giving me a little more reaction down lane. That's because the lanes are so dry that the weaker ball is actually saving more energy getting down the lane, going through the pins. And the stronger ball is losing energy in the front part of the lane, thus giving me a smoother reaction down lane. That was actually really Really good to show the different two types of balls that you can use. Now we're gonna get to strategy yep. and uh, hopefully Brad can get me lined up. <laughs> All right, so now at this point, we've got a pretty good look at the lane. We tried the first shots way over hook. We got in kind of the correct part of the lane and then we tried two contrasting different bowling balls just to give us like an idea of maybe which bowling ball would work the best for this scenario. But then now that we're in the right part of the lane and we have an idea of bowling balls, now we just need to figure out, okay, how exactly is this going to work? What angle should I be using? and what exactly should I be looking for to try and get my best score on, right. on this kind of pattern. Okay, so strategy. You could essentially do a couple different things. We've seen the extreme of the extreme. And if you're a high rev guy out there, creating shape and having your ball cover boards and then cover boards on the back end is easier for you. You know, your ball's revving, it's harder to play straight. So when you get this far left, naturally, even for a guy like Kyle, it, you're gonna want to feed the ball out to the right. There's so much hook that it just doesn't make sense to keep it on this narrow line sometimes. Because yeah. you think that, well, it's just gonna hook if I don't give it enough room. But that's not necessarily always the case. There's that way where there's the open angles, big hook, and there's also another way where we essentially eliminate the hook. Eliminate the hook. We use more ball speed, a more direct path with our ball angle, and we just try and pocket control. We hit the 1-3, if it goes up light, great. If it goes up a little high, great. But the goal is let's hit the 1-3 at a really consistent angle, and then there's also another one of, of playing the big hook. And we're gonna do both of those. Yep, so the idea is gonna be, okay, do I want a big angle, getting the ball to go through the pins, or do I want a smaller angle? Maybe try to control the pocket a little bit more. The number one thing in both these things is trying to control the pocket, then after after that, if you have a good control of the pocket, then we might adjust these strategies to get mm -hmm. carried. Because sometimes you're just ragging tens all day and that's no fun but for you gotta nobody. get to the hole. I'm gonna start left and I'm gonna match how I want to throw it with the image in my head, visually, of like what I'm trying to do. So for this one, I'm gonna try to use less angle. I have a ball we already talked about. This ball is actually giving me a really smooth motion down lane. I'm gonna have less angle. Because I want it smooth, I don't wanna get around it a ton. I mean, I'll get around it a little bit. I'm trying to do everything I can to get the ball to kind of hook stop into the pins. I don't want to get that ball really far out and come in. I have a smooth ball. My idea is a little hook stop. I'm not going to get around it because around it is going to want to make the ball go even further left. So everything I'm trying to do is to get the ball to be not too much angle and smooth down lane. All right, and we can even see the difference. The purple ball was splitting with all the energy. Yeah. That one did what the purple ball did, but it didn't split because the ball's just slower, more controlled. That was a bad shot, but that's a good sign. God, these lanes are not easy right now, oh, by sorry. the way. So uh, again, I know now that was too less of angle. The ball didn't get the lane, so I had to give it a little bit more angle, but I'm still not trying to get my hand around it to where I really get the ball to go left. I just want it to be smooth. There we go. There it is. So again, you can see the ball really didn't get that far right no. down lane. And that's where the oil is. See that ball just, yeah. it slid on down there? Yep, I'm essentially trying to use the little oil that's left in the middle part of that lane and play that to where it just gets my ball down the lane and sets up to the pocket. Now, I'm gonna try a shot now where I'm actually gonna try to get the ball closer out to like six. Okay. So this is me creating more angle. The idea is I'm gonna have to get around it. Maybe I'm throwing that shot right there and it's ring tending all the time. You know, I wanna win the tournament or I wanna bowl well in the league or I'm practicing, I wanna strike. If I'm ring tending all the time, a lot of times you're not gonna have the scores you want. So maybe that's ring tending, let's imagine that and now I'm gonna get more angle to try to get more energy going through the pins and just change the entry angle of the ball going through the pins oh yeah <laughs> 
That ball does not want to go left at all. No. That one got out there. Yeah, so again, we talk about strategy and we go through the bowling balls. I'm using this strongest ball on something that's burnt up, but the reason I'm using it, and this is when you're bowling, you have a reason why you're doing things. I'm using it because the ball is actually kind of burning up and allowing me to stay control of the pocket. It's not completely whipping down lane. It's giving me a nice, smooth, controllable reaction. And as long as that's carrying, it's carrying that's thing. then I'm okay with that. I don't need this crazy going through the pins, especially when the lanes get tough like this. Now, if that ball was to get to the hole like it has been doing, but then it's just not carrying, flat tan, weird stuff. It's like, okay, we have the idea of maybe just a little bit of a different ball. Don't go all the way down. To this. Yeah, there's a lot of balls in but between. But when you're hitting the too. hole and it's not carrying, you're close. So again, we're talking strategy. The big thing is whatever you're trying to do, you want to compare that with like the idea that's going through your head of, so I have an idea of, am I trying to get the ball out and really get a big angle? Okay, I need to throw it in the right way and imagine it to do that. So we had that ball, which we know we can probably kind of play anywhere. That's, I'm liking that ball mm -hmm. right now. We're going to try the same stuff with this ball. So completely different range. This is our symmetrical ball. I'm going to try one where I keep it in. I'm going to try one where I get it out. If I'm really trying to control the pocket and every time I get it right, the ball's over hooking, maybe I don't want to get it all the way right and this is what I'm going to do. Wow. Mm, it's kind of nice. It looked really nice, didn't it? Like yeah. The angle through the pins, is that the angle you're looking for or is that maybe a touch too much? So it was a lot. You can see it went through the pins more, but if I can control that, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I miss it just a little bit like the shots before and it would split on me, I don't know if I love that. But if I could hit the pocket eight times in a row, I think that ball is going to carry better. Yeah, if you take this ball and that motion through the pins, it looks perfect. It looks clean. It looks like you know what you're doing. But if the second you don't throw it that perfect, it plaques a 10. Nah, I'd rather take a ball that doesn't look as good through the pins, but that'll give me yeah. some offense. Okay, so that was our, you know, we're talking strategy here. That was mine where I'm not trying to get the ball right that much. What'd that get to? Maybe 10 down lane, yeah. something like that. So now that was our in shot. We're going to go try to go around it now. We're going to get the ball further right, maybe out to like five, six, seven. I'm not that accurate, so I can't control this that much, but we'll see what happens with the ball reaction. Dang! And I can almost tell a little bit that when your angles are that far open, the hand just subconsciously can get a little wristy. Wristy, You can yeah. try and make it come back. Yeah. Those shots look good. That might have been a fluke. Maybe I'm warmed up now. What ball would you throw? Mm, I would start, if I have a really good feel of what I'm doing and I'm really comfortable, I would throw the hustle because I think that's going to carry. Those two balls went through the pins really, really, really nice. well. But it, maybe if I'm feeling a little off and I need something to control the pocket better, I would probably use the magic gem. And honestly, I would use that magic gem as long as it's carrying. As soon as it stops carrying, I go to the hustle. Do the scores matter? Yeah, it would so be indicative was, of the score. If it was higher scoring? If I needed one, 260 the last game, I'm going with the hustle because it's going through the pins more. All right, so we tried the big hook. It actually looked pretty good for you. So if you're a high rev guy out there, think about those things. You know, Maybe try and get the ball a little bit farther out, allow your rev rate to do what it needs to do. However, there's another way out there for lower rev rate guys. And I think one of the best performances I've ever seen in history of bowling is on the driest lanes we've ever bowled on, the US Open and Syracuse. Uh, you finished ninth that year. Mm. Uh, Norm Dukes, oh. like third day, they did a double burn, a, a fresh, a burn, oh, and then yeah. a double burn. And people were throwing it to the pins. People were withdrawing from the tournament because there was no oil on the line, right? So what does Norm Duke do? He grabs a ball and he takes all shape at it. There's no, there's none, there's no, there's nothing. He's laying the ball down at the last board on the left side, so board 39, yeah. and he's playing the fallback. And uh, I think there's a name for it, like the backup, you know, you know when a truck backs up, it goes beep, 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 beep. That's that's what we're looking for. That's what this ball is. <laughs> this ball is backing up, okay? And we, we're taking all shape out of it. This is specifically pocket control. This is for lower rev rates. However you want to hit the 1-3, light, high, it doesn't matter, but it's a direct straight angle. Take your hand out of it if you can. And that's the other way to go about this. We're creating length here. And how can you create length? Well, you can move left and find oil. Another way to do it is you can take your hand out and not get any revolutions yep. on the ball. And there's going to be more ball speed here. We're not hitting it. We're not trying to get the ball to rev. We're throwing it right in front of us, direct angle and no shape and I'm gonna try and lay this down on the left side of the lane and we're just gonna fall it right back in there oh that was pretty good Dang. first shot all turn not bad video. you could do both ways 
Um, it just depends on the types of balls you have, the type of bowler you are, but I've seen magnificent performances and high scores from doing that. You take all the shape out of the ball, yep. and you just literally throw it at the 1-3, you watch it just fall into it. If you plaque a 10, whatever, you know, or if it's a little weak, whatever, but you're getting to the hole. Yeah, and we understand that we may throw it a little bit different than you at home, but the same concepts do apply. You need to get the right bowling ball in your hand, whether you're moving left and you're in front of the ball return, or maybe your move left is just fourth arrow. Moving left is the way to go, and then making sure you have a strategy, you're visualizing, do I wanna get the ball super far out there? Do I wanna keep it a little tighter? Just having that image in your head can really improve your scores and help you throw a consistent shot. So guys, we appreciate you. That's yeah, a little uh, that burnt house shot. And it was a little lesson for me too. So yeah. thank you guys. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you on the next one.